All right, we took a little summer hiatus, but guess what? The big three is back and just in time for Tennessee football. I'm Heather Harrington. This is Will West. Will, we got to take our time machine back so far to Monday night. And let's recap that Georgia Tech Tennessee game, double overtime, ends up being a win for the Vols in most dramatic fashion. 42 41 was the final. What were some of your Tennessee takeaways from the Georgia Tech game? I don't know that I take that much away defensively outside of that they have no rotation whatsoever on the defensive line or in the linebacking core. Um, I do think that they figured ish out the, the secondary mm-hmm. after you yanked Justin Martin from the game. You need that guy to be a player for you this year. Colton Jumper played every play. You had multiple guys that played 90 plays on the defensive line. Every guy played 80 plays on the defensive line. That's not the way football's played in 2017. Tennessee needs to figure out a rotation this week. A couple of the takeaways I had. Defense, I'm still nervous at defensive tackle, especially because you really only played two the entire game. That's a position where you need to be rolling between four and six guys throughout the SEC schedule. So that made me nervous. Secondly, though, there's some playmakers hidden on this Tennessee team. Love the Rashawn Golden forced fumble. Love Marquez Callaway coming virtually out of nowhere. So that was a positive. And then three, still a lot of questions to be answered. And they probably won't be answered until that Florida game. Probably not. Maybe not even Georgia, quite frankly. All right, we had the NFL schedule kick off. Patriots get a beat down from the Kansas City Chiefs. Did you go to bed? Be honest. Did you go to bed? Uh, I went to bed. It was 17 to 7. I went to bed. Let me let me give you some real talk. Kareem Hunt on my bench. Ooh. So, uh, what were your takeaways? You know, week one of uh, of the NFL, just one game started so far. But give me some Super Bowl predictions when you're looking ahead. I, I took the Packers and the Steelers, and I feel like I just keep they're, – they're Lucy with the football. I'm Charlie Brown with the Packers, right? <laughs> I keep picking them. Divisional weekend, they're gone, right? So, <laughs> But I, I'll say the Packers stay healthy. I think Randall yeah. Cobb has a massive year. I think they actually have a running back on the roster this year, which will help matters they didn't last season. So I think that helps. I took the Steelers in the AF. I like the Patriots. It is tough to, to repeat. And a lot of people may not realize this isn't the same Patriots team that just won a Super Bowl last year. No, very different. They turned different. over all kinds of guys on this roster. It seems more talented on paper, but mm-hmm. chemistry, building those things, the winning culture, do your job the Patriot way. I think it takes more than a year to institute that. So I took the Steelers. You know, the AFC is the hardest to divvy up, in my opinion, because I think Oakland's going to make some noise. Obviously, I think Pittsburgh's going to be in it. And then, of course, the New England Patriots. If I had to put my feet to the fire right now, I'm going to go with with the Patriots just because, hey, they've been there, done that, and Tom Brady looks super uh, set on another title this year. Uh, But I wouldn't put it past the Steelers. So uh, in the NFC side, I think you see, especially with the suspension holding up, Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys, they are going to take a step back. I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. Um, It's kind of the Packers in, in Atlanta, right? I mean, what do you get from those two teams? It's hard to bet on either of them. I'm not going to say a rematch, so just for the sake of being different than last year, i got to go with the Green Bay Packers as well. And then finally, last but not least, hey, Tennessee has a home opener. Hey, how about that? Yeah, they're going to play some football on the Hill tomorrow. This is more of a have fun tailgating and enjoy this yes, big it's a old win. Event. It's a social event, this game is, for the fans anyway, right? Are you tired of the FCS opponents and the lower tier programs on the schedule? I, I, I don't like it, but look, this is good for Tennessee this week. It's frankly exactly what they need. They need to figure out defensively a rotation. So find two, if not three, defensive tackles that you can put in with your two starting guys. Find minimum a third defensive end that you can give 25 to 30 plays to a game. And then offensively, the first half didn't work. What they tried to do is they tried to probably go too far in evolving Butch Jones' offense because everyone's figured out the read option. The second half worked for Tennessee, yeah. but it was probably scaled back too far. So if you can find some middle ground between what Tennessee was trying to do in the first half versus the second half offensively, that would be good. I think, you know, Tennessee's going to be able to figure out a lot of things, like you said. That's what this game entails. I feel bad, not really though, for Florida <laughs> because they're not going to get to iron out all their inefficiencies efficiencies on offense with their some. game. Yeah, with their game getting canceled. So, that's going to be tough for them. So, it is a get well game and figure out who that travel personnel is that you're going to take down to the swamp and depend on. Uh score prediction for the uh final? Whatever they want it to be, I'll say 59-13 just to pick one. All right. I'm going to say 45 to 10. That's it for the big 3. We'll be back next week.